We are live with Dharma Talk Tuesday. I'm so happy to see you here. We are in the final week of August. It is the week after my birthday, the week after I got food poisoning for my birthday. As you can see, I'm doing much better now. Duke is joining us here. Let me see if I can flip the camera around. Duke, you got your Transformers blanket? You. <laughs> He's, he gets so shy. Do you see his blankets and his toys all over everywhere? I mean, it's he's like a child. Okay, Duke, lay down because you're making me anxious. Lay down. Lay, Duke, lay down. Got his blankie. Duke, lay down. Okay, let's keep going. So today we're talking about the three hidden reasons why your business is not where you want it to be yet. So um, this... Dharma Talk Tuesday is really designed for you if you um, have a vision for a business, if you have a vision to be an entrepreneur of some kind. Um, I obviously work with many coaches and consultants. However, um, you know, there are people who join my group coaching program, Maya, or who hire me for VIP days or things like that, who aren't necessarily a coach or a consultant, but they take people on transformational experiences like retreats, or they have products that they sell and they want to sell more of them and make a bigger difference that way and things like that. So there are three reasons why you, you're, you, there are three hidden reasons. Let me just be really clear. There are three hidden reasons that, um, you probably don't realize are happening for you right now, but I, my, my intention in today's Dharma Talk Tuesday is to really highlight them so that you can look at them, you can hear them, and you can see yourself in them and really do something about them. Um, create a breakthrough so that you can start to see the results that you want to see as soon as possible. Sound good? Hearts and likes if that sounds good. So um, if you know anyone who may resonate with this Dharma Talk Tuesday, definitely share this with them. This is going to be a really powerful Dharma Talk Tuesday, especially for people who consider themselves to be analytical or controlling. You know who you are. <laughs> and if you know anyone who um, has that type of personality, then be a good friend and share it with them. Type their name in the comments below or go ahead and just hit share on, uh, hit the share button here so that others can see it. All right, so I'm gonna jump right in here and get straight into it because we don't have much time and I wanna make a really big difference for you here. Okay, so there are three hidden reasons why your business isn't where you want it to be yet. Let's talk about the first one. Okay, so the first one is probably the most deceptive and tricky and clever of them all. And I actually was inspired to talk about this with you today because I was speaking with a friend of mine who um, really like this was her reason why she wasn't successful yet. And I also want to give like a caveat and a premise um, before I before before I tell you what this is, I just want to give like a disclaimer. That's the word. I want to give a disclaimer um, and say, um, listen, just listen to me the whole way through here because if you, especially those of you that are kind of analytical and watching this or kind of controlling and watching this, if there's one thing I know about humans, it's that we love to be right. So just watch your internal mental dialogue as you're watching this and listening to this and just watch that part of you that really wants to be right about your limitations. You get what I'm saying? That's the disclaimer. Okay, so the first hidden reason why your business isn't going where you want it to go is because, and I know so many of you are going to resonate with this because I hear this all the fucking time, is I don't make the, I don't make offers to people because I don't feel confident and clear on my product and or I don't, I'm not sure it's going to deliver what I say it's going to deliver. I'm afraid to make a promise on what it's going to deliver. So I don't make offers. And if I don't make offers, I'm not making money. And that's why my business hasn't taken off yet. And I've even heard people say, I won't compromise my integrity to sell this thing or to make an offer. Like, so th th that's the language that I've heard for this first hidden block. Now, let me be clear. I am all about integrity. 
you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the first and the last person to say integrity is number one. My intention always, whether I'm working with a client or a customer or someone at one of my events or a friend or a family member, I am the first person to admit if I've done something off and I need to take responsibility and I want to make it right. I, like that is a huge value for me, okay? So I wanna just like share that disclaimer with you. And what I've discovered is that many people use this commitment to integrity as a really clever block, a really clever racket to not um, take a risk or move forward or like get on the phone and get on an enrollment call or make an offer because they don't want to be out of integrity on what they promise. So they'd rather not make a promise. They'd rather not make a declaration. They'd rather not tell someone that they're going to deliver something if they don't feel full confidence that they can deliver it. They'd rather just not do it at all. So if this resonates with you, if you know what I'm talking about, feel free to put in the comments if you know what I'm saying. Some of you, this may not make any resonance for, but, um, some of you, like, I know this is a big one for, for some people because I literally was just talking to someone about it the other day. And when she realized that though integrity is a very important quality for um, an effective leader, she was actually using integrity as an excuse, a very clever excuse to not move forward, to not make offers. She was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that that's actually been my block, that that's actually like getting in the way of the success and the results I want to create in my business and also the difference I want to make for other people. Like other people are being deprived of the benefit and the transformation that I can create for them or that my product could create for them, if maybe you're a product person, because I am using integrity as an excuse and a reason to not take a risk, to not make an offer, to not put myself in a vulnerable position that someone may say no to me if I make an offer and they're not interested. Or do you guys get what I'm saying? Hearts and likes if you get what I'm saying. So again, this is not about selling snake oil. Like that's not what I'm promoting right now. I'm not about, you know, a bait and switch, like I'm manipulation. Like, no, like I'm not advocating that at all. This is for the people who are paralyzed in analysis, paralysis, not taking action because your perfectionism is in the way. You're, um, you're using, you're using something really great, like a commitment to integrity as a seemingly valid reason to not take action not take a risk, not take, not to, to be afraid and do it anyway. Hearts and likes if this is landing. I know that's like super <sighs> twisted, <laughs> but I literally just had this conversation with a friend, <clears throat> a friend, and she was like, that is exactly what's happening. So I know that that's happening for some of you out there. And she's a smart, amazing, brilliant person. There's no reason why she shouldn't be at the multiple seven figures that she I mean, it's like, you look at her and like, why wouldn't she be more successful? Well, that's a huge block for her. That's really in the way. So I definitely know if it's in the way for her, it's in the way for some of you as well. So that's the hidden block number one. Hidden block number one. Let's talk about hidden block number two. Hidden block number two is either you don't know the prices that you're willing to pay or you are not willing to pay them. Now let me let me talk about prices for a second. In any given decision that we make, there are prices attached to it, even in not making a decision, because not making a decision is also making a decision. Hearts and likes, oh my God, my earring is falling. Hearts and likes, if you know what I'm talking about. Where's the back? You guys, my earring fell out and the back is nowhere to be found. Help me manifest the back reappearing. That's like a sign. Those of you in leadership, do you know what I'm talking about? When signs fall off the wall, there's like a sign when your earring falls out of your ear. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to leave this right here. That's never happened before. How funny is that? Okay, so, <laughs> so 
let me go back to what I was saying. Even not making a decision is making a decision. Even not making a decision is making a decision. And there are always prices to the decisions that we make. So if you're not connected to what prices you're paying currently or what prices you're willing to pay, that is going to get in the way of you creating results. So let me give you an example. Every morning I get clear on what I'm committed to creating that day, even if it's a weekend. I know this sounds so dorky, but even if it's a weekend, even if it's a Sunday and Sundays I don't typically do anything except for spend time with God, spend time with Matt or with family or friends or whatever. But even then I have a commitment. I have a declaration. Even if it's like, I am committed to play today. I'm committed to being really, really present with Matt or to total restoration and revi like revitalizing, okay? And there's prices. There really are prices that you pay in any given moment. So get, I know this sounds crazy, but even on Sunday, a day of rest, the prices that I pay to committing to rest are not looking at what's happening in my business or with my clients for 24 hours, which for me is very hard because I love my clients so much and it's so hard. Like they will tell you, oftentimes I am in there on Sunday in the Facebook group because I love to, I'm gonna see if I can just like stick this back in and if it'll just stay. What do you guys think? Who wants to, who wants to bet that this will just stay? Let's pretend like that never happened, okay. So I, a price that I pay in committing to rest on Sunday is not knowing what's happening in my business for 24 hours. Again, for a workaholic like me, that's really hard. That's a big price to pay. But the, the payoff to commitment to being present with my family and friends and boyfriend and, you know, resting myself is that. I, it's, it's like it recharges me and I need that. I get to have that. I desire that. That's part of my vision for life. Do you get, so even with something like that, there's a price and there's a, there's a payoff. So, um, for example, we're right now in the last week. I'm going to be really, you guys good if I'm really straight with you here? Like, can I just be really straight with you? We're in the last week of Maya enrollments for 2019. And then the doors to Maya are closed. And then no more enrolling into Maya, Money Alignment Yoga Academy. So I made a commitment with myself. There's prices I'm willing to pay to make sure that the word gets out, that people know that this is the last week to enroll in Maya for 2019. One of the prices I'm willing to pay is to annoy people. Like a price I'm willing to pay is to be annoying, to be perceived as annoying. That e emails are coming at you every day, all about how it's the last week to enroll in Maya. All about you know my my Instagram. I mean, a lot of it right now is about Duke and coffee. I'm not gonna lie, but there's also posts about the fact that it's the last week to enroll in Maya. So the price I'm willing to pay is to um, be relentless, <laughs> that's not really a price, is to be annoying, is to look bad, is to like, it's like, like the whole fear of looking bad thing, the whole people pleaser thing, like that's a price I'm willing to pay and I'll tell you, it's, it's because I've had too many people say to me, oh my gosh, I wanted to enroll in Maya but I've missed the enrollment period. Or I wanted to enroll in, I, I got this a bunch last week, I wanted to enroll in the birthday boost that you offered, but I missed the enrollment period. I've gotten it too many times, so I know now that if I don't just plaster my promotions all over my everything, where the people are, like go where the people are, tell them what's happening, provide all that information, all the details, everything they need to know, then I, I know that, honestly, I can sleep better at night because I know that I'm helping people in the way that I'm being called to help. And that's a price I'm willing to pay is to feel annoying or to be perceived as annoying. Hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down at this point. So with every vision, every commitment, every decision, there are prices that you pay. Maybe your decision is that you put off doing Maya for a year, you stay doing what you're doing. There's prices to pay in that decision too. Leaving money on the table, missing out on the opportunity. Maybe there's a health price that you pay right? There's costs to that. So there's always a price to pay. 
so even when you're doing something totally on purpose or fun and relaxing, like resting on Sunday, there's a price that you pay. And I'm always connected to the prices I'm willing to pay because if I'm not, they will catch up on me, they will catch me off guard, and they'll knock me on my feet, they'll throw me off. So for example, like, you know, there was a time when I wasn't willing to pay the price of being annoying, <laughs> being perceived as annoying. And so I didn't email as much about Maya as I really probably should have or could have. And as a result, the consequence was so many people emailed me saying, oh, I missed the Maya promotional window or when are you going to run it again? Or, and as a result, those I've gotten emails from those people and they're off purpose. They're not making the money that they want to make yet. They're still unhappy. Like, there are so many negative, not negative, but consequences that are not in alignment with my vision that came from me not being willing to pay the price of being perceived as annoying. I'm just using this as a small example. So you got to be clear on the prices you are willing to pay based on your vision and then be willing to keep cl be clear if you're actually willing to pay them or not. I was talking to a friend the other day who was supporting and she said, I'm not willing to pay the price of sickness and body breakdown. And I was like, great, perfect. That's so good that you're clear about that. You know, like I've, there are times when I'm willing to pay the price of exhaustion. There are times when I'm not willing to pay the price of exhaustion. It just depends on the vision of whatever the thing is that I'm working on or that I'm going towards at that point. There's no right or wrong at all. You just need to be connected to um, that information because so for example one of the times I was I told myself the morning of I'm willing to pay the price of exhaustion today 8 30 at night I hit a wall I remembered I said I was willing to pay the price of exhaustion so I kept going I kept going and sure enough I committed um, and achieved and did the thing that I said I was gonna do and there's nothing like that feeling of doing what you say you're gonna do I mean nothing gives you confidence like that nothing no amount of money can can buy the feeling that you have knowing that you are a woman of your word that you do what you say you're gonna do all right so we've got some people hopping on here Giovanna Ashley Jody she says I needed to hear this today Shawnee Suzanne hello thank you for the birthday wishes Steph says it's in your lovely hair is it it's like it's like a it's like an earring backer trap. <laughs> oh, hi, Ari. <clears throat> Suzanne says, it's in your shirt or on your chair. Yeah, I'll find it. I'll find it, you guys. Thank you. Hi, Yolanda. Oh, my gosh. It's falling again. <laughs> Steph says, it's good you are being visible because you are really aligned with what I do. And you were not on my radar, except I was teaching yoga at a hotel where you came and held an event. And people came to my class and realized they were supposed to be in your thing. So I learned about you. That is so fucking funny. Oh my God. That is so crazy. Well, I'll have to connect with you more about that stuff and learn exactly what you were doing. That is so funny. Oh my gosh. Yolanda says, hi, my mentor. Yolanda, your post in the Maya group, um, was it yesterday or the day before? So awesome. I'm going to go back in and it's on my, it's on my bullet journal list to go in and go through the Maya group and see all the amazing, there's so many amazing things happening in the group right now. So I saw your post, wanted to acknowledge that. All right. Okay. So I'm going to sw swipe the comments to the side again, because I always find them so distracting when I'm trying to land a point. <laughs> Love you guys. Keep them coming. I'll swipe them back over when I'm finished making this last point. Okay. So hopefully that second point lands. So the first point was, um, using integrity as an excuse and I hope you guys really get what I'm saying with that. The second is be connected to what prices you're willing to pay and actually be willing to pay them. The third hidden reason why your business is not quite where you want it to be yet is that you, how do I want to put this? Um, your vision needs to be the most important thing to you. And you need to be unapologetic about that vision. So your vision needs to be the most important thing to you. And you need to be unapologetic about that vision. So I'm going to break this down here. So um, a friend of mine, I'm just going to use a very specific example. A friend of mine slash client slash my photographer, you may have seen me post about this, Anya. She was just diagnosed with brain 
well, she had surgery to remove a brain tumor and it turns out it's cancerous. So she's going into radiation and chemo. And um, after surgery, she lost the use of her right arm, although I fully declare and profess that it is coming back. Um, and I, my vision is to, <sighs> my vision is to have a level of success in my business that I can support her, someone like her, a friend like her, in a significant way financially. That I can support my fam, my, my dad who can't work anymore because he had a stroke um, and he can't, he's very limited in his mobility and um, he, I mean, he, yeah, he can't work anymore. So like being able to support my dad in a significant way financially, to give financially, to, um, to be able to be the kind of person who can just swoop in and make a difference for somebody in that way. I, I, I've been gifted with the resources and the skills in terms of like, I just, I have a vision. It's a big vision. It's a powerful vision. And now I see that it is my dharma and it is my duty to grow it as big and as quickly as possible because it's my birthright. And it's my, it's, it's my calling, it's my blessing, so that I can not only make a difference for my clients, which of course is part of it, but I can also make enough money to make a difference for people like Anya. And I, you know, I'll, I do things for, for her, but I would love to do things at a greater level. So I can make a difference for my family. So I can make a difference for um, things that come up, you know, charities that, um, like, for example, I heard, I, I was listening to the Tim Ferriss podcast today and J uh, James Cameron of like Avatar and Titanic and his wife um, were on and his wife has a charity called the Avatar Foundation and it's all about um, uh, basically healing the environment and providing marketing materials and resources for people to understand what they can do to contribute to healing the earth. You can look it up. But I would love to be able to have the resources. It's my vision and my commitment to get to a point where I have the resources to contribute significantly to a cause like that, to a cause like that that I really believe in. And that's my vision. And I am unapologetic about that. I am unapologetic about my vision for making bucket loads of money. I'm unapologetic about how much I work. I'm unapologetic about the fact that my business and my clients are my baby, other than Duke, are my child. And I'm happy to give them as much of my time as possible right now because I don't have like human children at this point in my life and I will at some point. And I'm not gonna be able to give my business the kind of attention that I give it now. So I wanna take advantage of this time now and I'm unapologetic about that. I'm like, I'm, ex I'm totally okay with it. I'm not only okay with it, I'm unapologetic about it. And so every day, my actions, my beingness, my words, my social media posts, my content that you're watching right now are aligned and reflective of that vision. My vision is the most important thing in the world to me, um, which by the way, so many people think that there's some kind of like either or. No, Dharma is having it all. Like I have a great relationship with my man. I have a great relationship with my family. I'm actually going to go back home to St. Louis again next month, which those of you that have been following me for a little while know what a big deal it is that healing is so profound in the way that it's been with my family. So I'm going back home again next month because that's a huge part of my vision is spending quality time with my family. So these are all parts of my vision that are very important to me and I'm unapologetic about it. Um, and if someone comes to me and says anything about like, you know, a judgment around making a ton of money, like I am really okay with being perceived however people perceive me because number one, I know who I am. Number two, the people who are important to me, my close friends and family know who I am. And I am okay with, and this is the prices conversation. I'm willing to pay the price of not being liked for the sake of putting the vision first, being unapologetic about that vision. 
And that's how you get to be. You get to be unapologetic about your vision. You get to be bold, um, to have total conviction about that vision, and to be unwavering in your commitment to it. And so often I see people compromising, I see people half-assing, I see people apologizing for their boldness, for their energy, for like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm too much, I'm too much. I hear that all the time from powerful women. No, it's time to stop doing that with love. <laughs> it's time to stop doing that. It's time to just own who the fuck you are and be unapologetic about whatever and whoever you are and go for your vision wholeheartedly. And that is so beyond important. And if you are ever confused about your offering or your um, pricing or your packaging or what to do next, you guys, all you need to do is go back to your vision and your vision will give you the answer. And sometimes, you know, I've had moments where I felt uninspired by my vision, where like I was really done with Maya, like I was like sick of teaching Maya. And what did I do? I went back to my yoga mat, back to my body wisdom practice, and that brought me back to my vision, which brought me back to inspiration, which brought me back to the energy, the momentum, to do what I needed to do to make the difference in the money that I was committed to making. It all comes back to vision. It starts and it ends with vision. Everything, really everything does. It starts and ends with vision. But if we're gonna talk about your business right now, if you are not operating from that place of your vision is the most important thing to you, then you will get stuck. You will find that obstacles are bigger than you. You will find that you are confused and not sure where to go next. But when you shift and your vision is the most important thing, miraculously and suddenly all that shit goes away and you're able to find your way with ease. So, I'm going back to the comments now. Steph is quoting me here, your vision needs to be the most important thing to you and you need to be unapologetic about your vision. Hi, Keelan. All right, that sums it up. So let's just go through the three points. The hidden reasons why your business isn't where you want it to be yet. Number one, using integrity as an excuse to not make offers, not take a risk, not make happen what you get to make happen. Number two, you don't know the prices that you need to be willing to pay or you aren't willing to pay the prices, which again, you're paying prices no matter what decision you're making or what you're doing, whether you're conscious of that or not. And it's better to just be conscious of it and be conscious about making the choice of what prices you're willing to pay. Number three, your vision it needs to be the most important thing to you. And if it's not, you're gonna get blocked. So your vision needs to be the most important thing to you and you need to be unapologetic about that vision. And that's it. So that's it for Dharma Talk Tuesday. I hope this was helpful for you. If you, like I said, know anyone who needs to hear this, please hit the share button or tag them below. And I very much look forward to seeing your thoughts, questions, comments on this thread. Um, as I mentioned, this is the last week to enroll in Maya, so there are only three spots left, and actually one person took one today, so there's technically two spots left. There's two spots left in Maya, five more days to enroll. And um, don't let this be a year, don't let this be a moment where you miss out, where you felt the calling, you were afraid, you held back, and then another year goes by of the same old stuff that's keeping you where you are, and life is way too short to be in that space. It just really is. So if you know this is your year and this is the time, um, what I will do is I will post the link here to book a call with one of my elite coaches to speak with you about Maya. So no obligation to buy Maya when you're on the call. If it's not a good fit for you, not only will we not try to sell it to you, but we're also not gonna make an offer. <laughs> and so um, it's all about like exploring. It's all about your vision. At the very least, you're gonna get clear on your vision. So I'm gonna post that link here to talk about Maya. And um, I send you blessings today on Dharma Talk Tuesday, and I will see you next time.